Hello everyone, this is Sir Monch and in this lecture video, I'm gonna talk about the material self. Particularly, I'll talk about materialism and its connection to how we seek personal fulfillment. As usual, before we begin, let us explore a few number of questions to examine what you already know regarding the topic. First, What's your understanding of materialism and how does it relate to personal happiness and well-being? Second, what do you know about financial literacy? And is financial literacy related to materialism? Third, what do you think are some of the potential negative consequences of excessive materialism? Have you experienced mental health issues related to materialism, like feeling sad, feeling empty, um, not happy at all, despite having all the material things, or being happy, being fulfilled, despite not having so many material possessions? And last question, in what ways do you feel personal growth, relationships, and community involvement are important for achieving overall well-being, and how do these experiences relate to materialism? Okay, so for you to have an overview of the content of this lecture video, these are the topics. We'll talk about materialism in the context of consumerism, materialistic values, competing views of materialism, reducing materialism through financial literacy and environmental literacy, and tips for optimal functioning. When we say materialism, that refers to the belief that material possessions are important and central in one's life also central in how one self views his or her identity no and that the importance or the worth of the person is largely determined by his or her material possessions by the commercial services that he or she can avail no materialism is relevant in today's age of consumerism, capitalism, no? the age of businesses, which is marked by proliferation of shopping malls, online stores, and other commercial activities. So diba, when we open our mobile phones, if we have some money in our pockets, or if we can ask for money from our parents, we can easily you know, buy something by just, you know, opening certain applications such as Lazada, um, Shopee, and other related or similar applications. And that kind of culture is consumerism, no? Na, there's an emphasis on buying things, emphasis on um, selling you know, certain products, no, for you to, um, for your clothing purposes, no, and other aspects of your material self. Now, the concept of a materialistic self refers to the idea that your sense of who you are and your sense of self-worth, sense of your importance, your self-esteem are tied to the possessions and the pursuit of material wealth we cannot deny that we there are people who are like this no they feel extra confident they feel extra good about themselves they feel happy because they possess certain things so for example if you own an iphone and you tend to feel more superior compared to your peers who are just, you know, using Android phones, no? Because iPhones are more expensive. So in that example, your sense of self-importance, self-worth 
is related to your material possession, no? There are also instances where someone may be more confident in, you know, going outside because his or her clothes are branded clothes and not from thrift shops or ukay-ukay, no? So that is the material self. Now, if we had to define further, a materialistic self has three elements. No? A materialistic person is someone who believes that possessions and acquisitions are at the center of his or her life. And that is also called acquisition centrality. Na, um, the, the manner of acquiring material possessions is central. That's why it's acquisition centrality. It is at the center of one's priorities in life. Second, um, also a materialistic person is someone who believes that those possessions are essential to their satisfaction and well-being or simply essential to their sense of happiness. No? And so, maotong mga tao nga, whenever they had less, they feel empty, they feel sad, no? Or um, they believe that when they get the things that they want, when they get the possessions that they want, those that's the way for them to, you know, to feel happy, no? To feel satisfied of life in general. Or they don't feel any satisfaction at all in their life, in their family, in their relationships, if they don't get to get these certain services, clothing, etc. Um, lastly, a materialistic person is someone who judges their own and others' success in terms of the number of possessions accumulated. Yeah, So that is also called possession-defined success. That is, the success of the person is defined by how many material possessions you have accumulated. And I think this is common, you know, a common belief. You know, there are people, for example, um, when, we, when we observe the material possessions of our neighbor, let's say um, they already own this particular kind of TV, ref, um, washing machine, and other appliances, we tend to believe that they're successful, no? And similarly, that is also applied to how we view ourselves, no? Now, um, when we feel that our home is filled with a lot of appliances, we tend to feel we are more superior compared to other people who are in homes with less appliances okay and that is a materialistic value okay part of a materialistic self and how we view others as materialistic beings now there are competing views when it comes to um, understanding materialism we have positive materialism and negative materialism Positive materialism means that the accumulation of material possessions is a way to achieve progress, enhance economic prosperity, and improve quality of life. So obviously, there are certain material possessions, particularly mga, let's say, um, appliances, home appliances, that really are important because they can improve our way of life. So let's say we get an air fryer and we get to fry certain food with, you know, less hassle, less effort, no? So that's a positive, that's the, oh, that's one of the positive sides of materialism. Also economic prosperity because consumerism is also linked to economic development when many people are, you know, are great at consumptions, you no know, great at consuming things. That's you know that's that's an indication of active, um, active, active economic 
space, no? That people are consuming a lot of things. So if we remember our lesson on GDP, so that can be an indication of economic progress when people are consuming, no? People are getting material possessions. Um, the second one is negative materialism. Uh, negative materialism, on the other hand, is the accumulation of material possessions that can lead to a shallow and empty life and can even harm individual and societal well-being. No? So this is the other perspective saying that um, there are people who believe that having a lot of material things can make them happy, but in essence, if they examine their life internally, they're not really that happy. It's really empty. It's really an empty indication of success and that you're not really investing a lot. You're just investing on materials and not on more important things such as relationships. So let's talk more about negative materialism. Specifically, materialism becomes negative because it can lead to lower levels of life satisfaction. Um, why is this so? It's because when a person is excessively materialistic, it gives you a sense of, you know, insecurity, no? So you feel like you don't have enough. You're not satisfied with what you have. So you want more. So let's say, for example, um, someday you want to get an iPhone and when when that day comes, you want to get an Apple Watch and then AirPods and then MacBook and so on and so forth. So that is connected to, you know, your feeling of insatiableness. Na morag dili ka makontento. No? And that can also lead to, you know, fewer social connections. So why would why would that lead to fewer social connections? It's because you're not really building healthy relationships anymore. You no, know, when you are excessively materialistic, your priorities are um, you know, saving money for you to get certain properties, but not necessarily to build healthy relationships, no? And it's also possible for an excessively materialistic person to feel less empathy for others. No? So they don't feel compassion towards others. They don't they are not any more generous. No? They cannot become I mean, they stop being generous because um what's important is the things that they have to buy for themselves and yeah, maybe for other members of the family. Also, it, it becomes negative because when excessive uh, excessive materialism can also lead to environmental degradation and social inequality. So if the demand for certain products is high, you know, it can lead to environmental degradation. So for example, when we have all these things that need, let's say, minerals, so that's why we have several mining companies you know, getting minerals from the earth and eventually that can be connected to um, yeah, environmental degradation. So why do we have a lot of mining companies? It's because there's a demand for you know, minerals that are important for the production of certain um, material possessions that people also want. Okay, so kung sobra na, hindi syempre, that results to um, environmental degradation and also social inequality because there's a tendency that in the age of consumerism, only a few number of people get to be rich and get to enjoy a lot of, you know, the, the riches and the wealth that comes from um, consumerism. So there are people who are only paid less in certain industries, factories, you no, know? and only very few businessmen, um, few people who own businesses who get to enjoy 
kaning benefits of consumerism. And lastly, excessive materialism also leads to financial stress and debt. And I think this is something that many of you can relate. No, There are people who like to buy products, who like to buy certain appliances, for example, but not from their own money, but it's through borrowing money. No, and eventually it can lead to financial stress. No, when someone is um already full of debts. No, like ni abot na siya um one hundred thousand poro utang because of buying certain appliances at home. No, and that can lead to financial stress. No, and lack of satisfaction in life. Okay. So uh, let me share with you several studies here. In 2020, there's a study in Indonesia with Gen Z students. No, um, They found out that people or these Gen Zs who were highly materialistic, they are less likely to save money. So... Diba? Imagine, medyo dili jud siya sustainable na behavior when you are materialistic. No? Kay, dili man ka mag-save. You don't save money for fu- for the future. You, your, your mindset is you spend, you spend, you spend. Okay? Also, there's a study in 2017 with Filipino high school students in Metro Manila the researchers found that students who were highly materialistic were less engaged in school and had lower grades. So what does this mean? So these people, no, um, dagko silag allowance or naa silay money, no, and their mindset is they have to have um this certain bag, this certain kind of laptop, certain kind of phone, certain kinds of clothing. Actually, those people that were more likely um na mga dili mo iskwila tarong and had lower grades. Okay. Also, there's another study in 2021 with U.S. young adults, they found out that highly materialistic students were less likely satisfied with their current romantic relationships. Mm, diba? So, I think you can also relate. No, There are people who are in romantic relationships na when they are when you know when members of the couple are highly materialistic mas mag-emphasize sila sa let's say date no na dapat bongga na ah, dapat adto mo sa mga mahalo na restaurant sa inyong mansory no and then kung naay mansory dapat na ay gifts no dapat na amoy mga paliton dapat mo travel mo together always tapos dapat sa kada travel mga on sa mahal na mga restaurants and you get each other gifts, no? And it was found out na sila tong mga less happy, less satisfied with their current relationships, no? Okay, again, we can explain that, okay? If we remember, um, if we, if, if we remember the different, the three aspects of materialistic self, one of that is katong um possession related na uh, i mean acquisition as a form of pursuit of happiness na ang mga materialistic na mga tao ang ilang source of happiness is ang ilang acquisition so mao ni na pag abot dito sa relationship na dapat ang ilang tagaan ng importansya is ang ilang partner murag dili na kay murag mas importante pag ihapon sa ila ang ang um, let's say uh, ma-post sa social media nga dito sila sa kaninga kuan na restaurant dito sila na sila yung mga gift for each other and so on okay and lastly we have this study in 20 in 2002 uh, being materialistic makes people less happy daw because 
ang materialism really, kung ato lang tawon, it's an individualist orientation. So if we remember our chapter 2 lesson on individualism and collectivism, individualism is 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 a tendency to prioritize oneself, no? And that is in conflict with collective oriented values such as family orientation. So try to reflect on your observation sa obang tao. There are people, let's say, for example, first time sila nakatrabaho kay, let's say, bago lang sila nakahuman pag eskwela. So there are people who, you know, who encounter dilemma as to kung saan man nila ilang first sweldo, second sweldo, or sweldo in that first year sa ilang career. No? So naiuban kung... Um, paliton sa imong mga panginahang lanon, palit laptop, palit motor, um, palit ng mga sanina, palit ng mga kuan. Pero, naapoy option nga, dapat ang first sweldo, dapat ihatag sa parents, etc., etc. So, naay conflict diha of values. Do you prioritize yourself or do you prioritize others? And, in this particular study, as I mentioned in 2002, materialism leads to less happiness because it tends to make us prioritize ourselves and less of others. Okay? Okay, so there's one more. No? In this 2014 research, materialistic people reduces happiness, but it reduces more strongly among people in developed countries compared to those in developing countries. So for example, in the US, no? so in Australia, these are advanced countries and there's an emphasis on wealth that you have to earn more for you to be happy. So actually mas dako daw ang epekto sa ila ng materialism. Okay? So in let's say in simple barrios, for example, in a simple municipality or in in a simple or relatively, you know, less commercialized na city like Surigao City. So dili ra siya kaayo if dako ang effect ng ng materialism daw. Okay? Dili man inga naka intense ang consumerism. Pero remember in 2014 dili pa sikat ang mga online shopping. So karon murag di naman siya mamili kung taga asa ka kung asa ka nagpuyo because consumerism has penetrated our digital lives, no? So it doesn't necessarily matter anymore where you are from no whether you are from a developed country or developing country it's because consumerism is really everywhere now regarding positive materialism materialism can be positive because there's only one reason here because it can stimulate economic growth and development as i mentioned um Excessive materialism of people can stimulate businesses, no? can stimulate a lot of factories to produce and produce. And eventually, this can give you know, job opportunities for a number of people. No? That's why it's really important for economic growth and development. There's a study in 2015 that found that materialism can result to sustainable consumption but only when individuals are pro environment so take note um we have mentioned as one of the negative effects of excessive materialism is um it can lead to environmental degradation because we're we a lot of people are needing resources natural resources no to manufacture certain products, to manufacture certain appliances or whatever, and yeah, things like that. No? But as we as we can see here, materialism, yes, can actually 
it's possible for materialism to produce um sustainable consumption only if people are pro environment that is when they are when they are conscious when they are mindful of the the effects that they can give to the environment no the harmful effects also here's an interesting paper in 2011 that spending money on material possessions versus spending on experiences for example events that one lives through like travel concerts and other outdoor activities na ashay mas mas mulid siya into a sense of fulfillment and happiness okay because there's a difference there when someone is materialistic the person spends money to buy material possessions but there is an alternative option someone spends money on experiences such as traveling um watching concerts experiencing live concerts or like the uh, entertainment at the bar and outdoor activities like climbing mountains um experiencing camping no so these are an entirely new way of spending or different ways of spending money which are not necessarily materialistic no because not it 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 won't really give you material possessions but it gives you experiences no that's why it's experiential spending not materialistic spending and that is the type of spending that leads to fulfillment okay so how do we reduce excessive materialism because as you have seen no excessive materialism has more negative consequences than positive consequences no so dili siya sustainable it can it can damage the environment no it can lead to social inequality and empty life okay shallow quality or low quality relationships so here let's explore two manners of reducing materialism the first one is financial literacy financial literacy refers to the knowledge skills and habits that individuals need to make informed and effective decisions about their personal finances so for example at the moment when you have your money you no know, from your parents and when the time comes that you already get your own salaries from your job you no know, So financial literacy is being wise at spending your money. And it can reduce excessive materialism because you're able to understand the true cost of possessions, you no? Know? You get to understand na ah these material possessions are just material possessions that are meant to improve the certain functions or certain aspects of my life but these material possessions doesn't have to define me doesn't have to define my success doesn't have to define my worth okay also financial literacy can help you develop a budget you no know? so if you remember excessive materialism can lead to financial stress because there are many people who get tempted to borrow money just to get certain material possessions but if you are financially wise you have a budget you develop a budget and that guides you in how you spend your money also you prioritize experiences over possessions so that's one thing that i mentioned just a while ago no um when you are financially literate you know how to spend your money wisely and that means you understand that it's that spending money on material possession is not always the best way to go no the the better way to go is when we spend our money on experiences like camping let's say subscription to to gyms no um traveling instead of you know getting 
um expensive clothes, getting expensive gadgets, etc. Also, you get to invest in long-term goals. No, if you are financially literate, you don't you are not necessarily um you're not easily convinced to buy unimportant things, no? Mga ang tawag na sa ato is chichiborichi. So, dili ka mo madani pagpalit na mga chichiborichi because you know there are more important things and that you have an important long-term goal that you have to achieve. That's why you have to send money at the present time. And then, lastly, you understand the impact of advertising. So, you know, when you are financially literate, you also understand that these different advertising materials that you can see in Facebook, that you can see in Telegram, uh, in Twitter, and any other social media platforms, all these things are meant to convince you to buy their products no? and to, to sway you into you know, spending your money to those non-important things. No? And you can avoid that when you have financial literacy skills. Next one is reducing materialism through environmental literacy. So as what I mentioned earlier, excessive materialism can lead to degradation of the environment. And one way of reducing your excessive materialism is when you develop your sense of care for the environment. Environmental literacy is the knowledge and understanding of the natural environment, how it works, no, and its impact of and the impact of human activities on the environment, no, and the specific ways in which environmental literacy um, helps reduce excessive materialism include understanding the impact of uh, material possessions, choosing eco-friendly options, no, um, prioritizing sustainability, no, you don't buy mga one-time use na mga plastic, single-use plastics. You seek for bags, for example, that use um, sustainable um, uh, materials, participating in environmental advocacy, and focusing on experiences in nature instead of, again, um, consuming material possessions. There are other ways of reducing excessive materialism. As you can see here, we have mindfulness. Mindfulness is when you try, when you teach yourself to be more aware of your thoughts and feelings, including your desires for material possessions. No, And why do you desire these material possessions? So you try to, let's say, you try to meditate. No, You ask yourself, no, reflect. Um, are these things important? Are these things necessary? Are these things, um, do I really have to get these things in order for me to feel good about myself? So that's, that's, that's mindfulness, no? When you become mindful of your thoughts, no? Also, the practice of gratitude. Practicing gratitude can help individuals focus on positive aspects of their lives rather than material possessions. So this is one spiritual practice which we will cover in the next chapter, and that is being grateful for a lot of things that are already that you are already enjoying at the moment. And again, it can lead it can control your excessive materialism. No, when you let's say for example you prepare a gratitude list what are the things that I have to be thankful for today so you're thankful you have your parents you have your siblings for example um, you're able to wake up in the morning you have friends you, ha you were able to eat your breakfast you're able to you know to come to school you're able to watch this lecture video there are a number of things that we have to be thankful for but oftentimes, we don't see these things because we're so busy with other things, no? And ang example na ana is, ang kanang imong um, pag-aim for more material possessions, no? 
social connections also can help you reduce excessive materialism no um strong social connections with family uh friends and community can provide a sense of meaning and fulfillment that's not dependent on material possessions volunteering is also another way of reducing excessive materialism now when you spend money to help to do volunteer work no that can give you a sense of purpose and fulfillment and you realize that your sense of meaning sense of purpose sense of self-worth are not really dependent on the things that you own okay and lastly, self-care. Focusing on self-care such as exercise, meditation, creative activities can help, can give you a sense of fulfillment and happiness that's not dependent on material possessions. And as what I mentioned earlier, so let me develop further the idea of spending on experiences rather than on material possessions. When we spend on experiences, it can be a powerful way to reduce materialism and increase personal fulfillment because when you spend on experiences, you are able to create lasting memories. No? So you're able to um, memories uh, create memories with your friend or your partner in a you know in in a particular travel no na inyong diaduan destination na inyong diaduan it also fosters personal growth no it it makes you um it gives you a sense of calm a sense of seclusion a sense of you know, silence or break from your current distractions or stresses. It also helps you build social connection, increase um, happiness, and reduce environmental impact. So there's a film that I recommend you, that I recommend that you should watch. It's a documentary film about the benefits of living with less material possessions and how being a minimalist can lead to greater happiness and fulfillment. So in essence, the, the values which I have been um, describing in this lecture video are well captured in this documentary film. Now, being minimalist is the way to be happy. No? There is no personal fulfillment in getting you know material possessions in um putting material possessions into your homes or into your bedroom or into your life that the way to go is to become minimalists so what are the main ideas in the lecture in this lecture video so we have talked about the impact of materialism on personal well-being. Um, we have also talked about how to prioritize personal fulfillment and, and that is um, excessive materialism is not an option to go. No, So we cannot prioritize material possessions because they're not really going to give us that sense of personal fulfillment. And also the role of education and awareness, that is the role of educating yourself on how to become environmentally literate and also financially literate so that you know how to control, you know, you know how to control yourself in, um, in, in reducing excessive materialism and a need for cultural change, that is a need to become more minimalist no and not um not being so reliant or not putting material possessions at the center of our life and that's it for this lecture video the material self as usual these are the questions for you to reflect on how does materialism affect your life how does how do you feel about the cultural emphasis on consumerism? What is the impact of materialism on environment? 
how can you foster social connections and relationships in your daily life? What are some ways you can advocate for environmental protection and sustainability? And lastly, how can you prioritize self-care and well-being in your daily life? And why is this important for reducing materialism? Thank you so much for listening.